Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So, got a lot going on today. Um, we've got uh, we got some big news uh, on the processing front. Um, something's going on with Helen. I'm going to show you all what's going on with her. And uh, early on when I started this channel and started, oh, let me fix that, and started doing videos, one of the goals that I had was I was going to show y'all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I made, I made one of the dumbest mistakes. I made one of the dumbest mistakes that any farmer I think could ever make. And uh, I'm going to share that with you. Um, can't believe I done this. This is my own fault. Um, but I made a major screw up. So hang around the end. We'll show you what I done there. But we got a lot going on. Helen's there's something crazy going on with her. The mamas they're uh, they're getting set, getting close to farrowing, and uh, we got some big news on our processing. So uh, I'm gonna share that with you. But anyway, man, she's crazy. You running these pigs everywhere. Well, that's about as unscripted as it gets. But anyway, lots going on. Hang around and uh, hang out with us on the farm for a little bit and uh, let's show you what all's happening. So here's the big project. We got a surprise call, or I guess it was an email, a couple days ago from our processor. It said, I uh, wonder if y'all had any pigs that were ready to be processed. And we said, it just so happens we have about 19. So we were fortunate enough to pick up three process, three a date for three pigs, just three, but hey, that's uh, that's pretty big for us right now. We were able to pick up a date for three pigs next week. So I'm down here getting the load and shoot the trailer. We're gonna get our catch pen set up, um, and we're gonna move our pigs. Um, we're gonna move the feeder pigs over so that we can. Uh, have, they need a new spot anyway. And uh, we're gonna move them into a new spot. We're gonna have our catch pen set up and then we got the load and shoot in the trailer here. So next Monday night, we'll be able to uh, come out, sort them out. We're gonna take three boys right now. Still undecided on which gilts we're gonna keep uh, for breeding purposes, but uh, we're gonna be able to take three boys. So that's, uh, that's pretty exciting news for us. While we're down here, um, check in on Helen. There's some odd behavior going on with Helen. For about the past two days, this is her, every time I come down, or Sondra comes down, she comes right up to the fence and snorting, snotting, and growling. Checked her this morning, does not appear to be in heat, but if I walk the fence, she just hangs right with me. that growl. <clears throat> also, I don't know if we've showed y'all our feeder set lately, but this is the, uh, I ain't gone, Hill. This is the group that we're gonna be choosing some pigs to go to processing for. And there's some good looking piggies in here. These guys are really looking nice. Um, we're going about a, uh, about four weeks earlier than we normally would with uh, some of them. But, uh, you know, we've got dates. We can take advantage of these dates. So we're going to pick. And they all, man, they're all, they all keep going right up to the fence. Every time Helen comes around, they go right up to the fence. I don't know if they're wanting to move or what the deal is. I mean, they, we put them on this spot here a week ago. I mean, they've only been here a week. Plenty of feed, plenty of water. Got 
plenty of, there's a bunch of butternut squash up there. So there's plenty to eat. I don't know what their deal is. I filled the feeder yesterday. She's just acting, acting very aggressive. So don't know what her deal is. Man, that's a good looking bunch of pigs. those of you keeping score and this may be part of it so here are the mamas little mama and big mama and they are separated from this crowd by maybe 20 yards 30 yards max heck it ain't that far so i don't know if that's part of helen's problem or what the deal is but she just she's growls but anyway for those of you keeping score and following along, little mama and big mama right over here. Due to Pharaoh, big mama's doing two days, little mama doing about five. So we're getting pretty close on this crowd. Check big mama this morning. She is not in milk yet. She is starting to get quite a bit of swelling around her Vagina. What are you doing, begging? There's a little mama. She's grumpy. Oh, she stayed grumpy. And a little tip that I picked up from the Pharaoh to Finish School. We got an old junk hay bale, brought it out here, and uh, just tossed it in the tossed it in the field for these girls to kind of play around with, bump around and also to make a nest out of. So we just put it out here kind of between, I've got them two farrowing huts. Weather over the next week looks really, really nice. I think we're supposed to get cold a couple nights down into the 40s, maybe upper 30s, which should be fine. Uh, another farrowing hut right there. But we got this roll of hay out here and uh, they've been digging around in it, scratching around it. We come down in the mornings and uh, both of them are usually over here sacked out laid out waiting on feed um, as soon as they hear us come though they're gonna make a beeline for the feed bowls we have put them on ration feed until after they farrow um, they're on five pounds per sow per day and they're tolerating it well they've certainly slimmed down a little bit um, little mama here she's still pretty big and big mama she's still real big we we just have overfed these pigs um, leading up to their farrowing time. So I hope that doesn't cause me any problems, but she's still pretty big. She has slimmed down quite a bit, but uh, in the morning they get five pound of hog feed. Uh, and then in the evenings, I've got another box of these carrots over here. I think I showed y'all those. So in the evenings we come down and we'll take a shovel and, uh, also got some pears in there from a tree up at the house. So in the evenings, we'll pitch them over a couple of shovelfuls of the carrots just to kind of fill their belly. There's really not a whole lot of nutritional value there, um, but uh, fills their belly. And we've also noticed in the morning when we come down to feed, well, you see big mom there, she's really bagging up. In the mornings when we come down to feed, they're not near, uh, nearly as aggressive or grumpy or anything like that. So. Another thing that I learned at the school, it provides a sort of a quality of life thing for them. So that's what we're doing on the feed ration for the mamas. So let's go back up, finish working on this uh, catch pen and uh, setting up the paddock for the uh, next round of pigs to come over and uh, get ready to go to processing. So these are our um, three smallest pigs. Jack and Pumpkin, they're the two reddest ones there. They're uh, a couple of piglets off of 
Helen, and y'all saw all the drama that we went through with that. And then this is our new boar. Um, and we kind of showed him on the last video, a little camera shy. We showed him on the last video, and we'd went down, there he is. We'd went down about an hour and 20 minutes from the farm and uh, picked him up. And we picked him up with the intention of him being um, kind of Jack's partner in crime as time moves on to be one of our breeding boars. Well, got him home and put him over in the pen and just kind of let him start getting acclimated. Came out the next day and got to noticing we were watching him from behind and uh, Jack doesn't appear to be carrying a full package. Um, so we caught him, picked him up, looked at him and Jack apparently either only has one testicle or one testicle that has only one testicle that has descended. So we're not going to be able to use Jack or use this new boar for his intended purpose. So I reached out to the fellow that we bought him off of, kind of let him know what was going on. Super nice guy. Initially said, well, just watch him for a day or two and let's see that other testicle descends. And then he texted me back, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes later and said, listen, even if that other testicle was to descend, don't know that I would trust him to, uh, to breed. So we're gonna take him back. Um, the fellow that we bought him off of, super nice guy has been very accommodating during this whole deal so we're gonna catch him up after a while and take him back home and uh, figure out what we're gonna do from there but uh, I appreciate everybody sharing all the names we had a lot of really good names Hamilton uh, that was gonna be my favorite um, Chris P Bacon Wilbur Dirk I mean we had a lot of cool names that uh, folks had submitted so I'm gonna hang on to those suggestions and uh, probably use on the next candidate for uh, herd sire here. But uh, this guy's gonna have to go back. He's just not gonna be able to, you know, and he might, he might be able to do the job that we want, but just not, uh, that's not the type of genetics that we want. We wanna make sure that we've got boars that are um, fully equipped to do their job. Um, again, part of the deal here is we're gonna get into uh, probably raising and selling some piglets. And if somebody wants a piglet for a boar, um, that's certainly not a uh, that's certainly not a genetic that we would want to we would want to have in the line and potentially pass along. It's just a single single testicle. So part of farming, it's what we do. All right, so we've got our catch pen put together here. Um, trailer in the front, load and shoot. Uh, two pig panels, one panel on each side, and then I did put up a gate here at the back so that we can, uh, we'll sort us out, uh, three of the boys, get them in that catch pen, and then we'll get them up in the trailer, so, and then we can close the gate once we get them in there. I've also started setting up the, uh, um, paddock for the move. Uh, I'm getting kind of late. I'm going to have to run and take that piglet back dumbest mistake a farmer can make not making sure that the boy's got both of his testicles but anyway um started getting my paddock set up here got my post in um well i've got them where i want them i have to come back and pound them in and then it'll just be a real simple pull the wire uh around we'll pull a strand of wire one on each side meet it in the middle back here in the back and then this uh this fence line right here right behind where Grumpy Helen is standing, um, or right in front of where Grumpy Helen is standing. We'll just drop that down. They'll just walk right over here. So we're set up for the next, almost set up for the next move. We'll probably get that done, get that knocked out tomorrow. But uh, get late in the evening. Got a lot, uh, still got a lot to do. So, but anyway, big day, a lot of stuff going on. Um, you just never know when you're going to find a pig with one testicle. So again, lesson learned there. If you're uh, if you're ever buying males for um, any kind of breeding operation, um, look at everything. Uh, we just kind of, we looked at that piglet, and you know he looked great. 
uh, but we didn't look at the back side of it to make sure that he had uh, he had all of his equipment so again that's just you know learning experience and like i said um, we're going to show you all the the good the bad the ugly and the mistakes that we make so we're uh, we're certainly making them in spades. But anyway, I'm gonna post a link to a couple other videos, some stuff we got going on over here. Lots happening on the farm. We got some big stuff coming up. So uh, stay tuned. If you not hit that subscribe button, it's gonna pop up in the center of the screen. Hit subscribe, follow along with us. We appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.